Hey friends, my name is Jerry Gurley. I am a civil rights attorney and a pastor in Florida. Now, over the last few months, we've been having some very interesting conversations about ancient African history and black history in America. We've been talking about race. We've been talking about the concept of blackness. What is blackness? We've been asking that question, are you black? But most importantly, I've been telling you because some of you have raised the question of who are you and what are the sources that you rely on. So I'm telling you that my name is Jerry Gurley, and I'm telling you that I'm a minister of the gospel. And I'm also telling you uh, that I'm a civil rights attorney in Florida. But beyond all of that, I've been trying to point you to some of the sources that I have. And today I'd like to do that. Uh, Black Athena is the book that I'm referencing today. It's written by Martin Banal. And by the way, Martin Banal is not an Afrocentrist uh, scholar. He is a he was, he's now deceased, but he was a Jewish scholar. He was highly educated, uh, born in London, England, educated in England, taught in different universities around the world, taught here in the United States of America, very well regarded. He started out um, in a process trying to reconnect with his Jewish roots. And particularly, he was interested in knowing how they, his roots uh, influenced if, if at all, uh, what we refer to and what we think of as classical Greek culture and Western civilization. And what he discovered was many of the things, many of the assumptions that we made and what we make and what are taught in Western civilization courses every day, somewhere in some university in the United States of America and other places in the West, that our basic assumptions were wrong. And those basic assumptions uh, underlie the treatment that uh, we have, we meaning those in the West, not necessarily people of, of African descent, but what the treatment that, that, that white people and Western people have uh, afforded black people, the mistreatment. A lot of that was predicated upon the notion that Africans and people of African descent were not quote unquote civilized. In fact, the term savage, ignorant, wild, and all of those negative, all of those pejoratives were used to describe people of African descent and people in the inner uh, parts and the southern parts of Africa. And so Martin Banal says, as he starts out uh, searching his roots, he discovers that a lot of this knowledge that we attribute, this original information that we attribute to the Greeks, was actually borrowed from the people of Kemet. As a source, he quotes uh, ancient Greek writers, some of whom actually uh, visited Kemet, um, such as um, Herodotus or Herodotus, uh, who is considered by the Europeans to be the father of history. He cites to some of the sources where the Greeks themselves say that they learned uh, math, they learned medicine, and they learned astronomy, and they learned other sciences from the Egyptians. So there you go. Uh, we've been taught for hundreds of years that the Westerners civilized and educated and refined the people of African descent. But what the ancient uh, Egyptians uh, documented and what the Greeks affirmed is that they were taught by uh, the Egyptians, by the people of Kemet. And I was having a conversation with someone about this earlier today, that if you know the concept, if you know that the, what a Rhodes Scholar is, and it's a highly prestigious award and opportunity for the best and the brightest minds to travel to Oxford uh, and study uh, with the best and the brightest minds to see if they can develop any new knowledge. Well, in antiquity, Kemet was that place that scholars from around the world, particularly uh, Greece, if they had the wherewithal, it was a status thing to be able to study with the priest in Egypt. And Martin Banal covers this. This book has come under withering attack, so much so that Martin Bernal had to go back and write two additional um, volumes to address the criticisms that were leveled against him the second edition dealt with the archaeological evidence that supports the basic suppositions that he reached in the first book, The Black Athena. The third volume dealt with the linguistic uh, evidence. And so there it is. 
if you want to uh, get to the crux of what we've been talking about and what I will continue to talk about uh, on the Freedom and Justice Institute page, then I'm giving you some information. This is a must have for all series readers, for all series learners. And why get it uh, from a secondary source? The things that I say on this page, I'm hoping simply whet your appetite. And the best way uh, to uh, know something is to take the initiative to study it yourself. So folks, get this book, The Black Athena, written by Martin Bernal, uh, originally published in 1987 and won a book award in 1990. It's still a, a firebrand of literature in terms of controversy. Many people have attacked it. Many people are attacking it. There was one particular scholar from Wesley College. Her name was Mary. Her name is because she's still very much alive. Again, Mary Lefkowitz. And basically, she attacks uh, the Black Athena and she attacks Martin Bernal as being someone essentially who puts forth this um, fantasy uh, Afrocentrism uh, is, in her mind, uh, repulsive and it's fantasy because it gives black people a false sense of hope and therefore they are not inspired or motivated uh, to improve themselves because we're dealing in a mythical world. And, and Martin Bernal just totally uh, attacks that and, and attacks her lack of scholarship in a systematic way in his subsequent writings. But again, tonight, or today, whatever time you're seeing this video, I'm commending to you the Black Athena. You gotta get it in your library.